Hey everyone, I wanted to make a video dedicated to specifically the air spamming in Halo Wars 2. I know this has been something that a lot of people in the Halo Wars community are not a fan of, and they feel like it's almost impossible to counter a mass air spam or someone going like all banshees or all vultures. So I'm hoping that this little mini guide here can help you understand how to counter this uh, and some quick tips and strategies on how to make sure that you're not as annoyed the next time one of your opponents goes mass air. I've seen this for whatever reason happening more often than not lately. And uh, I don't know if that's because of the state of the balance of the game. I am still someone that I do not think that air is OP. I know a lot of people in the community disagree. Nonetheless, let's get into this guide and show you how to counter the mass air spam. Firstly, I think it's really important that you keep an eye on what your opponents pick for their leaders. So I'm looking at specifically Decimus, uh, Atriox, and uh, Colony on the Banish side. And then on the UNSC side, you got to be watching out for Forge and Isabel. The reason why I picked those two leaders is they have combat salvage. So if they send like mass vultures and you destroy them, they may activate combat salvage and they get them all back. And then you got to watch out for a second wave. For Decimus, Colony, and Atriox, they all have some sort of powers that can really boost the health of their Banshees. So Decimus has Boundless Fury and Boundless Siphon, which usually is the go-to mass Banshee spam is Deci. Colony has combat repair, so everything regains health passively. And then Atriox has the Bulwark and Unbreakable that makes some of the air units, or any unit for that matter, in that range uh, invincible or invulnerable for a short period of time. So if you see a opposing team having some of these leaders, it's not, of course, a clear definitive answer of whether or not they're going to go mass air, but it can give you a little bit of indication that they're probably going to be going air than some of the other leaders in the game. Also, keep an eye on what map you're playing on. Some maps, including Ashes and Highway, have teleporters. And the way that these teleporters work is they're actually usually located right next to a base. So uh, in, in Highway uh, especially, you're going to see a lot of people just send their air through the teleporters and it'll show up right by your base. This happens on Ashes all the time as well. The teleporters in Ashes are in a really terrible location. It's actually kind of behind one of the corner bases. Uh, so what I like to do is either put like mines on that teleporter so I at least have line of sight uh, or just keep some units close by. You can have them hold position um, and just really be on the lookout for your opponent going through those teleporters. There's also other maps that favor air heavily as well. This is Sentry and Badlands and that's just due to the design of the map. They have uh, choke points for ground units and they can get really... Um, just blown away by siege pretty easily so that usually as time goes on your opponents will transition into air uh, sentry is like the turtling map in halo wars 2 and so you're going to see a lot of air as the game progresses in sentry so now we know kind of the indications and clues on whether or not our opponents will be going air but what happens when they actually do go mass air what what can we do to combat that well, firstly, if you're playing as UNSC, combat tech marines are great. Uh, I think a lot of people kind of forget about marines as the game progresses. A lot of people even forget about the combat tech benefits, such as healing bases and vehicles. But the best benefit, in my opinion, is the rocket launcher that the marines get. It works really, really well against air. And they're also a cheap unit. Marines, again, are only 150 supplies. And if you have multiple bases, you can triple quadruple pump marines if you have advanced logistics you can build marines in like five or six seconds so um you know i don't forget marines marines are great next is kind of the obvious picks is wolverines and reavers these are the uh dedicated anti-air vehicles for uh the Banished and UNSC, they are quite expensive, so I wouldn't pour all of your economy resources into these units. I wouldn't make, like if you have 120 pop, I wouldn't make like 30 Wolverines or 30 Reavers or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's just not worth it. You're going to want to mix and match uh, units in your army composition. These units also have no attack, so if you need to go on the offensive, 
Wolverines and Reavers are not going to be what you need. So just be sure to mix and match them within your army composition. Uh, if you're short on supplies or resources, again, make sure you keep an eye out on combat tech marines. For infantry on the banished side, if you're playing as Yap Yap, take a look at Heavy Grunts. Their EMP ability is great to kind of stop a uh, vulture spamming attack. And regular Grunts, too, do fairly well against air. Uh, so there are some options available to you. Just be sure that you're spending your money wisely when that happens. Also be wary of where you and your allies are building your bases. There are, of course, dedicated building slots in Halo Wars 2, so you don't really have a whole lot of options. But say, for example, you're on Sentry, uh, you're playing as UNSC, and your teammate is playing as Banished. You're going to want to put the Banished bases facing your opponent. The reason being is a lot of people will go out of their way to attack UNSC because they don't get shield generators. So therefore, you want to put the Banished bases that are facing your opponent's First, that way your opponent either needs to fly past the banished base or it forces them to attack the banished base and there your shield turrets will really come in handy. Also, uh, you can get cloaking generators on banished bases so if your opponent doesn't have any detect, that attack is pretty much useless. So I know this, is, this isn't a, uh, like the perfect strategy, but if it's an option, please do so. Next is a more obvious uh, kind of strategy, but make sure you're using your Fortify base upgrades and making all of your turrets anti-air. Uh, Fortify base upgrades not only increase the health of your base, but it increases the damage of your turrets. Um, I see a lot of people that will build like four watchtowers or put in a lot of siege, and the siege is expensive and the watchtowers just really aren't that beneficial. Uh, on most maps so regular turrets are by and large cheap and the most expensive thing is that upgrade it's 300 power so you got 1200 power to upgrade all four of your turrets to anti-air that's not a terrible investment and uh, usually having four turrets will help soften the blow on a lot of these attacks and if you're worried that someone's going to attack you with mass air when you go off and do an attack yourself, you can always keep just a handful of units, uh, maybe a few marines or a couple of wolverines, hanging out back by your base and keep a couple of your offensive and defensive powers ready just in case. So maybe if you're playing as Atriox, you could keep your bulwark ready so you can make your bases invulnerable if someone attacks. Uh, same with Pavium. Uh, or you can kind of hang on to your healing um, your healing drones if you're UNSC you can drop those on your base if your opponent attacks with mass air or something like the beam or the mac blast hang on to that and you can attack the whether it's banshees or hornets or vultures when they attack you you can drop one of those powers on those units Finally, going mass air in Halo Wars 2, it takes a really long time to build. They need to be at Tech 2 if you're going to be banished making banshees, and you're going to need to be Tech 3 if you're UNSC going vultures. So that alone takes a lot of time, at least 10 to 15 minutes for like Tech 2 and, and Tech 3 to actually get some units going. And then also air is very expensive. Banshees are not cheap. Going mass banshees takes a substantial amount of supply, so you're going to have a lot of opportunities to attack your opponent. Most likely, if they're going to be going mass banshees as a strategy, they're not going to be doing anything else other than focusing on building up uh, harvesters and building a lot of apexes to really start pumping out these banshees. So all the while that's going on, you're going to have a lot of opportunities to go and attack your opponent to stop that. And if you do attack your opponent before all these Banshees are built, you're most likely going to have an open shot at their base. They're not going to have any other units because, again, they're going to want to save as many resources as possible to build, put into air. Same with UNSC. Vultures are outrageously expensive, and they need to be Tech 3 as well. So UNSC is going to need to go up to Tech 3 and build air pads and then vultures. And that's going to take a lot of time and resources too. So I, I really do think that by the time the game gets to being where people are going mass air, there probably has been opportunities before that to either end the game or prevent your opponent from doing so in the first place. And I know that's kind of uh, pointing the blame at, at you, but, um, you know, mass air isn't 
an easy strategy and it's not a cheap strategy. Uh, mass air takes a lot of time and a lot of resources and it leaves your opponents vulnerable for an extended period of time. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I, also, I, I probably should have said this earlier, but make sure you build either jackrabbits or choppers to go scout your opponent so you can at least see what they're doing. You don't want to be surprised that someone's going mass air and then all of a sudden they show up with like 40 banshees or something. Uh, just make a jackrabbit at the beginning of the game and wait till people start going in the second tech and then you can kind of go over and, and see what they're building and then that can give you an indication and prepare or go on the assault to try and stop that from being constructed. All right, that does it for me for this guide. I hope you learned something. Uh, I know that it may seem like air is overpowered. In my opinion, it's not. I think uh, air is reasonably balanced in, in Halo Wars. I actually think uh, Banshees are really weak, uh, but when you get a lot of them and you start stacking some of these other powers, you can overwhelm your opponents if they're not prepared. So uh, hopefully you're now more prepared to stop a mass air attack uh, if you need some better videos of this being shown, of countering mass air, I'll do my best to put some links in the video description on YouTube of some games where I've gone against mass air and, and have taken them down. Uh, so maybe you can take some, some lessons from that. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you, James.